Welcome to Kempo University. My name is Al Babinick and I'm your instructor. I want to talk real quick. Uh, a lot of my students ask me about board breaking and if you do it in your school, great. If you don't, that's fine. It doesn't make a difference. I loved board breaking. Uh, in my career, I started out as a Taekwondo guy. I was doing tournaments and stuff all the time. I love doing board breaking. It's one of my favorite things to do. As I've grown as a martial artist, though, I started to realize a few things. And one of the things you start to realize is the guy you're fighting isn't going to stand there and wait for you to like psych yourself up into that punch. And not, he's not going to let you give three tries on his ribs before you actually punch and break one. So here's my take on board breaking. Okay, Nothing wrong with it at all. And when you're first starting out, you want to make sure that you're doing all those practice runs to make sure you're not going to hit with the wrong part of your hand or break your fingers or your foot or something like that. You want to do those practice runs all the time. As you're getting higher and higher up in level though, you should be able to look at it and go, yep, that's where it needs to be. And the thing is, is that, uh, and this was told to me once, don't know how necessarily true it is or not, sounds all right to me though, is that a uh, 12 by 12 uh, pine board, three quarter inch pine board is the equivalent of breaking one rib. So if you can break a, a uh, 12 by 12 pine board, you can break a rib. And the thing is, though, when you're fighting somebody, in Kempo terms, if I was doing attacking mace, where you step back, you get the block, boom, and you punch the guy right in the ribs, he's not going to let you have three times, three practice runs to psych yourself up. It's more, what can you do now? All right? It's how much power can you generate out of the stance that you're in, and the point of origin that your hand is at. So when you're doing breaks, if you're doing a two board or three board break, fine, fantastic, but you should be able to do it in the same amount of time that it just takes you to throw a punch. Okay, now again, I want you to be very careful on this. I don't want you to just go crazy and try to break boards without any practice whatsoever, but when you're doing it, the more that your first guess is correct. So let's say you're getting ready to do a reverse punch on a board, and the guy's holding it for you, and you set the board up, and then when you do your practice punch, it's correct. Now, if you have to keep adjusting it because it wasn't correct, you don't want to break on the first swing, okay? Because that'll just get you hurt. But the more you could go, oh, okay, I'm doing this kick, you need to hold the board exactly this way and hold it this way, and you do your first practice and it's right, now you're getting the hang of it. But remember, I think board breaking got um, twisted, shall we say, because of people doing demonstrations in tournaments. Because they're trying to break things of ice and bricks and things like that. And they're, they're taking 10 minutes to warm themselves up and get their, their chi built up and stuff like that. Well, nobody's going to wait for that, all right? It's what can you do now? It's always within the snap of a finger. How much power can you generate now? So if you can break three boards, you know, when, when you get the hang of, okay, I set myself up perfectly, it doesn't matter if it's one board or three boards. It's... What can you get through first try just now? And then you have a better idea of how strong you are. I don't care if you can break five boards after half an hour of mental conditioning and practice and going ohm and all that fun stuff. Who cares what you can do in half an hour? I want to know if you're doing attacking mace, if some guy's throwing a punch at you, you step back and block and throw a reverse punch, how powerful is that punch now? Okay, so again, I don't want you to go out and hurt yourself with breaking boards and stuff like that. But I think the idea kind of got a little twisted or warped. And do something like a front kick or a palm where you're not going to break your knuckles or you know, break your foot or something like that when you're doing it if you want to try to practice something like this. 
and you only can do this type of board break when your first guess is right all the time. So when you have your board holder and he, he's, putting it, he's holding it like this and you're right all the time, then you can try to break right off the bat. Until then, keep taking your practices, build up to it and stuff like that. But that's, to me, that's never been the idea. The idea is how much can I hurt you when I'm throwing a punch or a kick in a fight? Not how much can I hurt you after half an hour of psyching myself up for it, okay? So again, to me, board breaking is just a little bit different, I think, than your average martial artist is thinking out there. But that's my thoughts. Just think about it, okay? That's all I ever ask is take a look at my point of view, think about it for a second. If you disagree with me, no problem. Do what you're doing, okay? If you agree with me, maybe practice a little bit different. Thank you for watching this video production from Kempo University.